Now, while this is going on, where are these supposed anti-hate groups? Why do I have to come from Israel all the way here to explain this to you? I mean, you know, the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, conducted last year this incredibly extensive study on hate, on racism. And it, it sent out its pollers into 100 countries around the world. And for some reason, they couldn't seem to bother sending anyone to Israel. Why was that? Maybe it's as, uh, as another Alex columnist noted, a survey of racism in Israel, if it were done, the results would make global anti-Semitism pale in comparison. But we don't have a report like this, so I crunched the numbers to find out if this is true, and I found out when comparing that the amount of attacks on Palestinians in Israel proportionately is 20 times acts of racism against Jews in America. Yeah, there's anti-Semitism in America and lots of other places in the world. But the amount of anti-Palestinian racism, I haven't even talked about attacks on Africans. Just attacks on Palestinians proportionately 20 times than anti-Semitism in the USA. But somehow this isn't important enough to write about. Why is that? Why is it 20 times, could it be? Because last year, the Israeli Education Ministry spent only $1.5 million on teaching universal values of coexistence and pluralism, and yet spent $15 million on supposed Jewish values, or Jewish things, 10 times the amount. Maybe that's what's causing this. Or maybe it's when you walk down the street in Tel Aviv, you, you can see a sign that says, here will be built the Hanged Men Kindergarten. Yeah, what I said, this is the name of the kindergarten. Why on earth would you instill this idea in an infant? This is a photograph from a kindergarten in Cholon, which is a suburb of Tel Aviv. Okay, again, translated it from the Hebrew into English for your benefit. Who wants to kill us? Pharaoh, Greeks, Haman, Nazis, Arabs. What do we need? We need a state. From minute one, teaching children, everyone wants to kill us, everyone wants to genocide us, and the only way we can be saved is by having this state, which you know they don't need to elaborate on. We understand afterwards has to be ethnically pure, and everyone else <laughs> non-Jewish has to be driven from it. But do, do little children need to be brainwashed in this way? And then you wonder why they turn out as adults the way they do? Why in high school do you, or grade school, do you get these checklists of students' rights? And it's like, it's my right to, uh, to go swimming in the summer. It's my right to eat ice cream. It's my right to kill the Hamas. Why does a child have a right to kill someone? Why is this right being taught in schools? This summer, you have an Israeli teacher sending this on his WhatsApp group or you know, like a social media uh, venue for him and his students. So he writes to his students, he tweets this photograph and he writes, these days it is important to remember that there are good Arabs too and they can be found here. And he tweets a photograph of a cemetery. This is a teacher sending his students. I'll have you know when one of those students complained and went to the administration, the teacher didn't get punished, but the student did for causing trouble. Well, it's no shocker when the education minister for the last couple of years has been Shai Piron, someone who did also issue the same racist ruling instructing Jewish people not to rent apartments to Arabs. Now, admittedly, that was a decade ago, but this is the same political cloth he, he's cut from. And it's not only formal education. Go to the informal, the largest youth group. So this is Norm Perl, the head of the largest Jewish youth group in the Jewish religious youth group in the world, Bnei Akiva. And this summer, what does he say on his Facebook? He writes down, turn the army 
into an army of Avengers. An army that will not stop at only 300 Philistine foreskins. So what this man is saying is, don't just go out there and murder or kill 300 Palestinians, but cut, by cut off their foreskins and bring them back as war trophies. And this is the head of the largest Jewish youth group, religious youth group in the world. And that's the a party or the youth group associated with the Jewish Home Party. But when we go to the Betar youth group, which is the youth group affiliated with the ruling Likud party. This year, on Holocaust Remembrance Day, he held a protest at the German embassy. And he said, remember what Amalek did to you. We will build a Jewish state that has no need for European morality. And again, this isn't coded language. I have to parse it for you because you may not be familiar. But for those who know the Bible, Amalek is, according to the biblical narrative, a people that are supposedly so evil, supposedly, that Yahweh, God, instructs the Israelites to genocide. They are so evil that you have to kill the men, the women, the children, the cattle, everyone. They must be completely destroyed. Whether this people actually ever existed, whether they were ever battled or genocide, we don't know. These are myths, and archaeologists can weigh in on that. But the point is, according to the narrative, that's what God says to do. And the, large, the, the ruling party's youth group leader says that on the day that we should remember genocide and remember not to commit it ever again, he calls for a genocide. He calls for a genocide against German people. This summer you have a, ca a captain of the youth soccer team in Be'er Sheva writing on his Facebook page, wipe all the pathetic leftists out of the country. Leftists to the gas chamber. This is what we've come to now, where you can use this Holocaust language on non-Jews, on Jews that don't agree that non-Jews should be killed. It's anyone's fair game at this point. 